Hello, and welcome back to the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast. I know I say this all the time, Amy, but I I am really excited about this. <laughs> I, sound like, I sound like such a broken record. I was actually, because I knew we were recording the show today, and I was thinking about it this morning, and I just think that this is not talked about enough. And the focus of the show is selling your books in bulk. Whether you are fiction or nonfiction, this works for you, and we're going to un- we're going to unpack some ideas, but the idea of selling huge numbers of your book to one buyer is really enticing. I mean, who wouldn't want to, who wouldn't want to do that? And Amy, let me ask you when I, cause I know that when I started doing bulk sales, this was what we call BA. So before Amy, um, <laughs> but when I talk about book sales, bulk sales, what comes to mind? Yeah, I'm really glad we're doing a show on this too, because bulk sales are challenging when authors don't fully think through what their options are and the best way to start going after these, at least, you know, in in my experience with the few clients that we've worked on, because it's tough convincing the potential buyer that you're a sure thing. And I think that's always, I mean, just like an individual sale on Amazon, you know, multiply that by a thousand, you know, if you're lucky or even by a hundred, like they have to be super sure that your book is going to benefit them in some way or whoever their clientele is, you know, it has to trickle down appropriately. And we've had clients that have seemed like good contenders that, you know, it just gets difficult to, to get them to see, well, this will work for you. You know, we've had clients that come to us, Penny, and they go, I know that my book needs to be in every, you know, university or every, they name some sort of retail situation. Um, But they don't realize how many more steps there are to figuring out a real solid plan to get your book in those stores or in those locations. Right, exactly. So the whole prospect of bulk sales is absolutely doable. It just, you have to, think through some of the steps. And I think the first, I guess, step one in the process really is to make sure that there's alignment, meaning that your book has to align with the message or the goals or the objectives of the the place, the people, the company, the catalog, whatever it is you're pitching to. And the genesis of my experience in bulk sales comes from, I don't know, a bunch of years ago, 20 some odd years ago, I think, I had a client who had a book on customer service and he came to me and he said, do you think that you can sell this book to Southwest Airlines? Do you think that they might want to adapt or adopt this book for to their, you know, because customer services, they're, they're, they're very, very big on that. And so I got to thinking about it and I went to Southwest Airlines and they said, oh, you know what? We have a conference coming up. That would which the book would fit in nicely. And I said, well, how about we do a bulk sale? I think it was, I want to say it was 5,000 copies of this book. And so the whole bulk sale thing was born. And so I, it was a little bit trial by fire because I kind of learned as I did it. And the client, I think the client still benefits from the, I mean, I think that they still adopt newly updated editions of his books for, conferences and events and things that they do. So the one thing that I will say about bulk sales is that they're the potential of selling again and again and again um, is pretty darn good. Oh yeah. And I think to your point, when it's right, it's really right. Yeah. You know, but it really is all the stars aligning because books are a higher value item, you know, Mm -hmm. specifically that like emotional intellectual value So with that comes really high expectations. You know, it's easy for an author to say, I write about this topic, this company, it makes sense for this company. Why wouldn't they want to buy thousands of copies of my books? But, you know, to your point, the conference, like that was the stars aligning. You know what I mean? Yeah. You reached out at a time when they really had an immediate need to execute, to use those for them to be a function, you know? So that's, that's, I, I love that example because that just goes to show how intricate and how smart you have to be with how you pitch these, you know, because again, with that experience going forward, thinking like, okay, you know, you need to give them ideas. So when you're pitching, just like with other media, 
if you have a conference coming up, if you have an annual event, if you have, you know what I mean? Give them ways so that it kind of sparks that light bulb moment for the people that you're pitching, you know, like, oh yeah, that's how we could use that book. Because the worst thing you could do is just assume that it's going to make sense to everybody, that that connection is going to make sense. Well, that's a, that is actually, that's a very good point. And you do have to, in many cases, step people through. I mean, unless you're selling to catalogs and stores, which we'll talk about in this podcast as well. But books do have a higher perceived value. So if you've ever been to a conference and you get the goodie bag and there's a bunch of stuff in it, bookmarks and maybe like little notepads and things like that, most of that stuff gets tossed, but the book typically gets kept. So that's an interesting you know, and I, and I apologize to all the conferences that I've attended, but the truth is, is that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, books, you know, that end up getting gifted, whether it's in a welcome bag or buying in bulk for everybody to read, you know, those have a much higher perceived value. So Amy, before we dig into this further, um, it, it, could you, where could you sell books in bulk? Um, and, Tell us, tell us why we love this so much. Well, I think, you know, one of the major benefits in which you led with when we started the episode is that it's a great way to move more inventory at once. Yep. You know, you're also getting more money up front. So instead of like, okay, here's a little check here and there, there's no reason not to get excited about that. Getting these bulk sales means you start making that return on your initial book investment a lot sooner. Um, and you don't typically see returns for bulk sales. You know, that's typically not part of the deal that you make, you know, you're not managing returns on these books. So it's a one and done sale. So while they're tougher to get, it's worth putting in the effort to find, you know, the right opportunities. Right. And then, you know, before we get too far into the how to's, let's just blow your mind and, and (laughs) let's blow the listener's mind and talk a little bit about where you could potentially sell your book in bulk. And uh, so we talked about, you know, like the conferences and Southwest Airlines and whatnot. Uh, Specialty stores are great opportunities. Corporations, catalog companies, conferences obviously mentioned that. Medical offices, dental offices. I mean, if you're just doing um, medical, you know, medical faculty, you may not sell a lot of books. But if you're targeting it, you know, a chain, um, that's got a lot of, a lot more oomph to it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that because it's a little tricky to get. So if you think about like, if you have a book that's compatible with, let's say patients who are dealing with asthma or something like that, um, there might be better ways than, you know, going after a medical facility per se, because there's a lot more layers to, there can be a lot more layers to something like that. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, again, that's why this topic, (laughs) you know, when authors come to us and I think that's one of the reasons we were so motivated to do it because it's easy to throw around the idea. Like, I just really want to sell a lot of my books quickly to someone. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, (laughs) exactly. We do get authors that come to us and say, you know, I think my book is perfect for this. And so this is just, this is also a really educational episode on understanding everything that goes into it. So if you are serious about it, there is some back end work on the author's part and some self-education Because, you know, you can't just throw your book in a marketing person's lap and say, you know, make all these big things happen for me. Like there's some digging deep elements too. So Penny, what would you say the books that work best for bulk sales, the obvious ones? Okay. Sorry, Um, I I lost, I have to say, (laughs) there was a dog asleep on a high perch. And I think she was like rolled off while sleeping. (laughs) Which we do these in live video. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was right over my shoulder. I kind of watched it happen in the reflection in my screen, but obviously didn't want to <laughs> yell into the microphone. Okay, sorry. Let's. <laughs> that's so. <laughs> if we had a real editing team, we'd say, "Well, we'll just cut that out." <laughs> I know. If we had. A- was that our sound person that fell off the ledge? It was our sound person. Frankie just totally fell off. Yeah, she just she just fell onto the floor and woke herself up. That's it was a, a really special moment. <laughs> oh my god, poor Frankie. Oh, okay. Um, that's so, what that's what you get for sleeping on the job, right? 
I know exactly. So <laughs> obvious, obvious books that work that you, in your experience, Penny, have been kind of a, a better option for bulk sales or more of a sure thing, a good starting point. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Uh, so trade books for sure, nonfiction books, hobby books, like, you know, any kind of hobby, golf books, things like that. Um, those are all good starters. See, so nonfiction that's that typically has a more straightforward market. Um, you know, fiction can work too. Sometimes we've seen, but again, it has to really make sense. And for fiction, that's not, again, we talked about earlier, it has to be obvious. You know, the person you're pitching, you have to give them examples, ways they can use their book, why it would benefit them. You know, you can't just send them their book and have them do all the work themselves. So, you know, one example could be if you live in an area with a lot of wineries and vineyards. Um, and if that happens to be an element in your book, whether it's a romance novel, we actually worked with an author. I thought it was a, a thriller or a saga, but there was a huge winery and yeah. vineyard element yeah. in her book. It was a cool concept. You might actually be able to convince a few of these places to purchase your books for their gift shop. So a bulk, you know, order just for them to have available or to have in the actual winery. I will say I've been to a few places and they always have a lot of retail stuff going on, other chances for things to buy. Um, but again, this is where proving you're a sure thing is absolutely key. And a lot of times that, you know, that also comes down to having great reviews, a solid platform, a clean website, active social to do some cross promotion, you know, with whoever you're pitching for bulk sales, especially if it's fiction, you know, because if you go to the swinery and say, Hey, I'd love for you to, you know, buy my books in bulk, keep them in there for in your retail area. And they're going to go, okay, well, how are you going to tell people about our winery and that your book is available here? And if you go, Oh, I don't have social. I'm not really into that. <laughs> they're not going to see this as much of a lucrative deal. Right. And, you know, there's, so in terms of fiction books, so I used to, we used to work with an author and she put all of her books in local um, salons, right? Because you have time when your hair is setting or whatever you're under the dryer <clears throat> to read. And it was kind of a fun thing, but she was a little bit limited to her local market, right? And obviously it was the salon copy of the book. So if they got into it and they didn't get to finish it, the idea was that they would go and they would buy the book on the Amazon to, to be able to finish it, which I think was absolutely brilliant. But now we have, I don't know if they're all over the country, but they are certainly big in the Western part of the US are Sola salons. So basically they this place rents out these massive buildings that are empty and everybody, every salon person gets a little office, right? And they can do... Um, you know, they can do nails and hair and waxing and Botox and whatever, but they each have their own sort of like little cubicle. It's a great, and it's private, it's closed off, but it's a great idea because if you're targeting that, you're actually targeting like 45 or more different uh, service providers, personal service providers in, in one, you know, situation. So that's, uh, if you're looking at doing something like that, think big, think outside the box. Um, and as we talked about earlier, you know, we, I've done book sales successfully. The one thing that I will tell you is that you must have determination and a willingness to stick with it, because this is, this is something that it, while it's worth your, the effort and the time, it definitely does take time. Yeah. The TLC is, is certainly there. And that's another reason that a lot of times when authors come to us and they say, I want to sell my book in bulk, that is something that we also consider you know, like how much of a direct line and justification is there in this book for the markets that they could potentially sell in bulk to, you know, what kind of timeline are we realistically looking at? And, you know, because you can introduce yourself via email, but you absolutely should plan on following up with a phone call, you know, make this real. If you're in the area, try to set up an appointment, you know, just know going into this, that realistically, you're not going to get that big bulk sale deal just by pitching them via email. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then you should also, you know, if you're doing this, you really want to make sure that you have all the tools in your toolkit ready to go. So you should also be ready in terms of sales. So part of your package is going to be mentioning, you know, discounts over X copies. So for example, you get a 30% discount for 500 plus copies 
2,500 copies could be a 50% discount. And if you go over 10,000 copies, you get, uh, you know, you get an 80% discount. If you, and if you really think that your book has the relevance to sell big numbers like that, my recommendation is first find a printer and get some pricing. And honestly, when I coach authors about book sales, I often tell them, you got to kind of reverse engineer, reverse engineer this. Don't print huge lots of books until you need them, right? Because A, bulk sales take time. They don't always happen. You don't want to be saddled with 10,000 books that you then can't unload on a, in a bulk sale deal. Get the printer pricing and the timeline for printing. That's really important because I know a lot of printers are running behind um, both for because they're just inundated with work, which is great, but also because we're catching up from paper shortages, which I think have been resolved just at least to some extent. But it's important to know what you have, you know, what you if you get a price quote. Um, then you can really start pitching your book intelligently for bulk sales because at the end of the day, hey, this book is a good match is only going to get you so far until you have pricing. Right. That makes sense. And I will say, uh, not even in terms of bulk sales, just for our general campaigns, Penny, authors do get a little nervous about how many books to have on hand. So do you think it's risky not having books at the ready for that big deal that you hope you're going to get? I mean, is that a problem? Obviously, you know, I think a few of our authors listening are thinking like, oh, she says not to order them, but I kind of want to because I'm a planner. <laughs> well, no, that's a re- that's a really good question. So the first piece of this is, is that you're not going to go after. So let's go back to the Southwest example, right? The you're not going to go after a um, you're not going to go after a conference that's happening next week or even next month. So you're going to plan this in advance. If you're selling to catalogs, if you're selling to, you know, even to wineries, I mean, if a winery says, sure, we'll start with five books, then you can just obviously order those off of wherever you get your books from your publisher, from Amazon, Ingram Spark, whatever. But typically you're going to be planning far enough out so looking at, for example, so we're this this podcast, I'm assuming, is going to be end, airing in, I think, December. Um, you're going to be looking at next year, even, you know, summer to fall of next year for of if you want to align for, with events or anything like that. So you're going to have um, enough time. And most of the time, you know, even if... Yeah, and part of the reason that you want to do that is because these deals don't close that close that fast. You have to get approvals. I mean, if you're um, if you're just pitching your book, as I mentioned, to local wineries, um, that you can probably start with. But you know, a lot of times they want to whet their appetite with five copies, right? So you're reprinting them, you're printing them, you're selling them locally. Um, but the bigger the deal, the more time that it takes. The Southwest deal, just to think back on that, I want to say the conference was like six months, six or eight months out. And um, it was, you know, we had plenty of time, obviously, to order and get the books. So you're both you're planning out. And then if you get like the Sola Salon example, right, for a fiction book or even a nonfiction book, you might get a local salon to test it, right? And so you could very easily order, let's say, 50 copies of your book off of Amazon or wherever you get them. And then if they decide to stock them in all the solo salons across the, you know, the state or states, lucky you, you can then bulk order them and get them at a better discount so that you can offer them the bigger discounted pricing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I mean, it does. And I think rightly so, it just is, a, it further proves that there is a lot of logistics that goes into this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. This, this is not one of those easy ways to be successful opportunities. <laughs> yeah. And if anybody listening is wondering how this all affects your sales rank, like we get it or your potential for a bestseller flag or something like that, that is something that you do end up giving up with, with a bulk sale but, you know, again, you have to weigh the pros and cons. You know, you get a big sale up front. You're not dealing with returns. Depending on your topic, you could be setting yourself up for a lot of future sales. Universities are a great example for that. You know, for example, if you can get into your into their bookstore because they see some sort of relevance for one of their degree program tracks, then, you know, those are sales for many years to come. That's absolutely right. Um, in fact, some years ago, 
I placed a book called The Great California Story, which was really an awesome deep dive into California's history and several universities in California still carry to this day. And this deal was done. So you've been with me for 12 years. This deal was done probably 15 years ago. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. And so the last part, (laughs) you've mentioned catalogs a few times. Do those still exist for books? Um, they still, yeah. So, cause the last, I like, I'm, I'm trying to think catalogs, honestly, we're knee deep in toy catalogs. To be totally candid. Like every other day we get a catalog. Uh, sorry. We get a catalog offer, you know, with all the that's toys. your ring notification for a dog, another dog falling off. the. <laughs> I know. Right. It's like, sorry. If I didn't have my phone, I couldn't function. Um, but yeah, so catalogs, do those still exist for books specifically? Because I know that was a huge thing for a long time, but they, they seem a little fewer and far between. Um, yes and no. So I get lots of catalogs still. In fact, the wine country catalog, which I know you've gotten a lot of Amy's husband one time made made a joke about all the baskets that she had, <laughs> all the wine country gift baskets that I've sent her over the years. Um, but there are still lots of catalogs that go out, catalogs, and even if they don't get mailed, because I know some people have that component turned off where they don't want to get mailings, the catalogs still exist online. And there's one catalog, and now I can't think of the name of it, but it's really, I mean, there are some really fun uh, really, really fun catalogs that books, fiction or nonfiction, hobbyists, whatever, would do really well. And keep in mind too that sometimes off the radar screen catalogs, like hobbyist catalogs in particular, are also uh, readily available. But there again, these places order very far in advance. So when we've pitched catalogs and we've pitched catalogs previously for authors, we're usually pitching, I want to say eight months out or something. So their buying season for the holidays is January to fit January, February. So wow. if you're, if you think that, oh, I want to get into a catalog this December, and obviously we're in December now, so you're a little late to the party, plan on going out, you know, take December to do some research and plan on going after the first part of the year. That's amazing. See, and again, it, it it just all comes back to, again, planning, I think is number one. Yeah. Like make sure you're able to, you know, plan out and put in the work that far in advance, making sure that you are ready and do the research to identify the exact right markets and make a short list of reasons why your book is perfect for them, you know, really drive it home. And just because the book exists is not a reason. That's... <laughs> That happens a lot. It's like, well, what do you mean? I wrote it. That's the reason. It's like, no, that's that's not the reason. It has to be, there's a lot more psychology involved in that. You know, so this is a huge investment. And honestly, I would say that Penny, a lot of times this is going to be an easier go for people that have a slightly more evergreen book or topic as well. Um, potentially, sure. I mean, if you, especially in particular for nonfiction, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just because I think there's so many books in, in, you know, just with how fast paced everything is now and how, you know, things can change in an hour on Twitter. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That, that is something to consider as well as how, you know, how often will your book need to be updated? Because you'll probably get that question, you know, so just be prepared that if you're writing about a specific topic or industry, be prepared to also include that. I think in your pitch, when you chat with people about potentially doing a bulk sale, the longevity of your content and what you have to say. And if you're kind of unsure of how to present all of this and to organize everything, you know, here's that shameless plug, like consult with the marketing team, you know, just get their advice on next best steps and get a plan sorted out. So you can really do this the right way. Right. Exactly. And then I think finally it's worth mentioning. And by the way, Amy, I just want to blow your mind for a second. I I neglected to mention this during the catalog segment, go to, go to catalogs.com. You will be blown away by how many catalogs there still are really in the yeah she sounded did you hear how painful it was for her? no 
I'm telling you, go look at catalogs.com. It will blow your mind. And in fact, if you're if you're thinking about doing this, if you think, oh, my book would be a great, whether it's a children's book or a nonfiction book or a hobbyist book or a fiction, whatever, take a look at catalogs.com. You will be absolutely amazed at how many catalogs that there are still exist in the world. Um, but the other thing is going to be, I think finally, so we talked about pricing finally is going to be your presentation packet. So Amy touched on, you got to have all the things you have to have a platform and website, social and reviews and things like that. Mostly the catalog company or the airline or the conference or whatever, whoever you're pitching to specialty stores, whatever, they just want to know that you're in it, that you're serious, that you're a serious person, that your book is liked. So when you put together your packet, lead with, you know, half a dozen or a dozen outstanding reviews that you've gotten for your book, right? So the book probably is not brand spanking new. And so it's, you know, you probably have put a little bit of effort into it. Um, Put together a packet that has the pricing info, right? And your, um, you know, your reviews and this thing, well, they're going to want to know the size of the book. Is it standard six by nine? Is it a big, you know, is it a coffee table book? Whatever it is, you're going to need to make sure that you have that in the packet and all the details. Many times, and just to take this back to catalogs for a second, catalogs are used to having, you know, people pitching them for products. So they will have, if you go to their website, um, and it varies obviously by catalog where it is, but typically it's under, you know, product submission, something like that. They will, they'll have the particulars of everything that they need that you need to have at the ready to pitch them. You can start first off, obviously, by calling around to find out if there is some interest or alignment, but I would shop some pricing because the pricing piece of this is something that if they're interested, they're probably going to want to know that right away. And it's going to take you a little bit of time to get those quotes back from the printers. But bulk sales, I love doing them. Anybody wants to talk to me about bulk sales, I'm t- serious, Tell up, set up a time to chat and we'll walk through it. But because it is a really, really fun way, as Amy mentioned, it's not necessarily off the radar screen and you're still making the sale. It's not going to make you, you know, it's not going to show up on the bestseller list, but it's definitely a great way to move a lot of books in a very short period of time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, we love doing these shows. We love your feedback. So any ideas that you have for shows, please send them to us. And we love a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.